What's happening guys? Welcome to another episode of Code That. Where I try to code stuff in a ridiculously short time frame. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at one of the most popular machine learning algorithms of all time. Gradient descent. So what are the rules? Well, as per usual, first and foremost, we are going to be setting a time limit. In this particular case, it's going to be 15 minutes. Second, I'm not allowed to look at any documentation or existing code. That also includes Copilot, and dare I say it, Stack Overflow. If I use either one of those sources, it's going to be a one minute time penalty. And I'll have the camera behind me so you can see exactly what I'm doing the whole time, as well as obviously seeing my screen. And third, we need some stakes. If I don't make that time limit, it's going to be a $50 Amazon gift card to you guys. Before we jump right into it, let's get a little bit of context. What is gradient descent? Gradient descent is a form of mathematical optimization. The goal is to find optimal parameters which minimize loss. Think of those parameters as trying to descend to the lowest point in a valley. The way we do this is by calculating the gradient of the loss function with respect to our parameter using calculus. The underlying algorithm is used in some of the most popular machine learning libraries, including TensorFlow, PyTorch and scikit-learn. So it's a ridiculously valuable concept to understand if you're interested in the field. Ready to do it? Let's get to it. Alrighty, let's do it. 15 minutes on the clock, let's go. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is go on ahead and create a Python file or script. So I'm just gonna call it grad.py. And then if we think about our basic architecture, so we are going to be implementing gradient descent for linear regression. So gradient descent, for linear regression. And the basic format of our function is going for linear regression is y equals wx plus b. So what we're actually going to need to do is implement or a gradient descent for this with respect to our loss, which is going to be mean squared error, which is treated as y minus y hat, which is our prediction. So this treat this as y hat for now. Y minus y hat to the power of two because it's squared divided by the number of samples n. Okay, so in terms of our overarching architecture for this particular algorithm, so we first up need to initialize some parameters. Then we need to create a gradient descent function. And then what do we have function? And then we need to iteratively make updates. All right, cool. All right, so initialize some parameters. So we're only really going to use one dependency here, and that's NumPy. So I'm just going to import NumPy as NP. So NumPy is going to be used mainly to create our data. So I'm just going to throw that up there. So in terms of NumPy, we are going to use that to create our X data and our Y data because we need some training data, right? So when we're using or building machine learning algorithms, we don't actually know what the parameters W and B are. So we can use gradient descent to go and find those out. Now, in our particular case, we are going to create two variables, W and B, to actually generate our data. But we're, what you'll soon see is that we can use gradient descent to find out what those are. So the amazing thing is that when you've only got X data and Y data, you can use gradient descent to calculate what those parameters are actually represented as. Okay, so we need X data, which is going to equal numpy.random.randn. And so this is just going to generate data which follows a normal distribution. So then we let's create 10 values and we want one example or one value in each one of those um, one value inside of for that particular array. So if I actually just went and ran that and typed in print X, let's deactivate this environment. And if we went and ran, so Python grad.py, uh, are we printing X? Why are we not getting any values? Python grad to buy. I'm not printing X. Oh, we haven't saved it. Let's go do that again. <laughs> All right, there you go. So you can see that we're getting this array printed out. Okay, never mind. That was just complete mental brain blank there. Okay, so Y equals, um, and then we're going to generate what our Y value is. So Y is going to equal some random parameter. So two, let's say for example, two, times x plus b now b is going to be mp.random.randn as well and then what we can actually go on ahead and do 
is create a bunch of other parameters so x and y so this is going to be the data that we use to train our gradient or to train our model and think of our model as really just this right so we're working out what w and b actually represents then we need to create a blank parameters so w and b w is going to equal 0.0, .0 b is going to equal 0.0, .0 and we'll iteratively go and find out what these parameters actually re represent. So ideally, once we go and run through gradient descent, we should work out that W is re represented as two and B is represented as whatever that value is. So this is the beauty of machine learning. Then, so these are actually parameters. Are we looking for time? 10 minutes. Okay, so these are actually our parameters and then we need one hyperparameter. Parameter, and that is going to be our learning rate learning rate so this is going to be how fast our algorithm learns so we're going to use so when we actually go and make our updates down here so we'll actually loop through a bunch of epochs so if you've ever used tensorflow or pytorch you know that we actually go and train through a bunch of epochs or effectively steps so think of it like one step towards the bottom of that valley so it'll be four epoch in range and we could set it to run for 400 epochs for example down here and then we'd actually go and make those updates here so this is where we'd go and run gradient descent okay so we've gone and in why do we have t kinta we don't need that okay so we've gone and imported numpy we've gone and created our data set up our parameters and created our learning rate now what we actually need to do is create this gradient descent function so this is going to be down here so we're going to create a new function and call it def gradient now let's call it descend descend and then this is going to take a number of positional arguments so it's going to take in x it's going to take in y it's going to take in w it's going to take in b and it's also going to take in our learning rate and what we first need to do inside of this function is initialize the partial derivative so what we're actually going to be doing is calculate the calculating the derivative of L with respect to each one of our parameters so our loss with respect to w and our loss with respect to b what these are normally referred to as dl dw normally you've got a bunch of fancy mathematical notation to represent this but we're writing in python and then you'd have dl db and we're going to set these to zero to begin with or 0.0, .0. db is going to be 0.0, .0 as well and then we also need because we're actually going to be calculating the average we need to know how many values we need to divide by. So we actually need how many examples we have in our training data. So n is going to equal x dot shape zero. So when we actually go and run this, we'll actually get the shape of x. So if I actually go, let's try running that now. So if I go print x dot shape and give me the zero value. So uh, what's it called? Python rad dot pi right you can see that we've got 10 values in there okay so we've gone and done that what we now need to do is we need to loop through our x and y values and calculate those partial derivatives and make updates to our w and b parameters so we'd be looping so for xi yi in zip so zip allows us to loop through both of them at the same time so we'd pass through x and then y i hate that pop-up drives me absolutely insane Okay, so then what we need to do is make an update to DLDW first up. And we actually need to calculate the partial derivative. So if you keep in mind that our function is represented as WX plus B, what we'd actually do is sub this into here. So dot Y hat equals that. So we'd actually end up with a function that looks like this. So loss equals Y minus Y hat. To the power of two. And then if we sub in wx plus b over here so wx plus b that is effectively the function that we need to go and differentiate so then we'd actually add them all up together and we dif differentiate or we'd actually go and make an update so first up we need to calculate the der partial derivative of which is represented as dldw so that derivative is represented as so if we just use the chain rule so we'd actually take down the two and then we'd be left with y minus w inside of brackets wx plus b and then we if we differentiate what's inside of this particular set of brackets so this here so excluding the the square root we'd actually come out with what is this so minus x so y goes to zero because it's treated as a constant so then it's minus one times 
effectively what you're seeing here. So it'll be, so the X goes to, oh, the X remains, W goes to zero. And then so effectively all you're left with is minus X. So the B will go to zero because it's treated as a constant as well. So what we end up with is minus X outside of here. So using the train rule, so it's multiplied by minus X. Now in our particular case, we can reshape this. So it looks like this. So minus two multiplied by X multiplied by y minus wx plus b now what we actually need to do is because we're going to be doing it each line at a time so we it's going to be minus 2 multiplied by xi multiplied by yi minus wxi plus b so that is our new function so we need to multiply there as well okay so that is this partial derivative now calculated so we need to add so we're going to iteratively update that and then we can do the same thing for our b parameter so DLDB is going to be equal to, so again, applying the same sort of architecture, we are, or the same sort of differentiation rules. Rather than having XI come out of this or minus XI come out of this, we're going to have minus one because B. So if we drop the exponent from one to zero, it effectively just becomes one. So if I get rid of this, that is our partial derivative now calculated. Now, what we actually need to do is we then need to go and make updates. So this is the actual update step. All right, so let's make sense. All right, we've got five minutes. We can make this. We can make this. All right, so we, what do we need to do? So we need to make those updates. So W then equals W, so our existing W value minus our learning rate. So this is how fast we're going to learn multiplied because we need to take the average as well, right? So it's going to be one divided by N, then multiplied by DL DW. That looks okay. Yes. All right, so make an update to the w parameter then we need to go and do the same thing for b so b is going to equal b minus the learning rate multiplied by one over n multiplied by dldb okay that looks good and then we need to return w and b so return w and b so that is our gradient descent function so we're initializing our parameters we're calculating the shape we're then looping through each one of our samples inside of our data. We are calculating the total gradient and then taking the average down here. So we could also take the average up here. And then what do we need to do? So then we are returning it. All right, that looks good. So then I think we can actually go and implement this last bit here. So let's get rid of some unnecessary spaces. So then what we want to do is we want to go and run gradient descent. So we are going to be returning W and B back from this function. And remember our gradient function is called descend and then to that we are going to pass through our x value from up here and our y value then our w parameter our b parameter and our learning rate and all things holding equal should be returning w and b so let's just print w and b for now because we still want to go and calculate our loss. Actually, let's do our loss first. So then our loss is going to be mean squared error. But before we do that, we need to implement or we need to work out what our prediction is. So y hat equals w multiplied by x. This is going to be the sum because we're going to have multiple values, right? So we need to add it together. So w multiplied by x plus b. And then we want to aggregate it to mp.sum. And we are going to actually, no, we're, that is our y hat value. We then need to aggregate it when we calculate our loss. So that's fine. So that's our prediction. Then our loss is going to be equal to y minus y hat. And then we're going to square that. And then we want to aggregate all those together. So np.sum. Compulsory axis equals zero to aggregate along the, the different samples and then mp dot divide boom and then we can print out all of our output so print uh, so for epoch uh, results loss is then pass through our loss and then pass through parameters parameters W is equal to W and B is equal to B. 
E. All right, and then if we run this, the Python grad.py. Oh no, what have we done? Invalid number of arguments. Uh, we didn't close this, I don't think. Oh, we need to divide by the number of samples. So uh, it'll be x dot shape zero. Oh no, our loss is it calculating correctly. Hold on, we're not updating it. Um, something's gone wrong. No. Our loss is decreasing, but what are we, what's happening with our W and B? We're not updating those. W comma B equals descend. We're passing through W and B, and we've got our learning rate. Y hat squared, with, that looks okay. So our loss is decreasing, but for whatever reason, we're not returning back W and B. Something weird is going on there. Ah, oh, that didn't make it again. Oh, damn it. Guys, we didn't make it. All right, let's go through what happened. So, uh, so we've got NumPy. That looks fine. We've got our parameters. We've, oh, our learning rate was 0, .0. <laughs> Hold on. If we go and change that to 0 0.01. Oh, no. Guys. <laughs> I was so close. I didn't realize the learning rate was set to 0 .0. Okay. I'm gonna I'm going to take it as an L. But there you go. So you can see it's actually calculating there. So our loss is reducing. We've got our parameters down here. So you can see that it's actually gone and found that parameter W is equal to 1.99, which is pretty close to our two over here. But if we went and changed this to five, for example, take a look at this. You'll actually see that we're able to go and rerun it and it's getting closer to five. So let's say we increase the number of updates. you can see that it's getting closer to five, right? And that is the beauty of it because then we're able to actually work out what those parameters W and B are to be able to go and produce linear regression out in the future. Anyway, we clearly did not make the time limit. So here's the Amazon <laughs> gift card. Damn guys, that's two losses. Well, we've been so close. I'm, I'm gonna have to try to hit that that next five, 15 minute time limit in the next one. Anyway, have fun with that for, for whoever manages to claim it. But you can see that we've definitely gone and implemented it. The only thing that was missing was the fact that our learning rate was set to 0, .0 hence why when we're going and making updates, just returning zero so we actually need that to be a value rather than just 0, 0.0 so if we actually go and change that you can see we're getting to 4.99 and our loss is 4.099 so we're getting very close and you can see it's estimating our parameter my head's probably blocking that parameter 0.76 over there so our actual values if we were to go calculate them or our actual new function if we were to go implement this in excel which i think is pretty cool so let's say we wanted to go and predict what our values. Let's actually go and pr print out X just as an example. So print X and let's print Y. Actually, let's print them. Yeah, let's print it right at the end. So after we've gone through this loop, print X and Y. All right, so these are our X values. So in this particular case, we've got that is our x value that is our y value uh, let me bring this up a little bit so these are our x values and then this is our y value now the, the beauty of this right is that because it's relatively simple to implement you could then go and throw it inside of um let's hide this uh how do i get rid of it anyway move that i don't want this explorer 
there we go okay so if we wanted to go and implement this i've got this weird one on the anyway so if we wanted to go and implement this inside of excel right we could take those parameters which in this particular case are 4.9 so we've got w where's b let's go run it again right so we've got our w parameter in this particular case it's got up to 4.7551 so that is w and then our b parameter is going to be the value next to it so in this case it's got to 0 0.047 whatever you see there all right so we could actually throw this inside of excel let me zoom in And our function is effectively whatever this is. So y is going to equal this multiplied by some value in here plus b. So if we were to go and pass through our x value, which in this case is minus 4.339 into here, we should get pretty close to what our y value is, which is that there. So 0.699. So you can see that that's like a simple way to go and actually implement this in a practical use case because you could actually just go and throw it into excel so if we actually went and trained it so let's train it for 800 epochs we should get even closer right so it's come back with parameters w equal to that and then b equal to that and then so if we plug in our x value which is this and if we take a look that is what our y value is over here so you can see that we are getting very very close using this simple implementation of gradius descent getting a little bit tongue-tied there clearly we we're coding super fast hopefully you've enjoyed this one guys i'll catch you in the next one peace thanks so much for tuning in guys hopefully you enjoyed this second episode of code that again i'm always opening your feedback so if there's anything you'd like to see challenged or anything you'd like to see improved do let me know in the comments below because i am reading them and i am collecting your feedback to ideally make this just that one percent better each and every time thanks again for tuning in guys Hope peace